Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, I have to apologize this morning. Had all kinds of technical issues. I don't know what's going on, but I hope you're tuning in right now. Uh, I know some folks are on the conference call, and I want to thank you so, so very much for being patient with me this morning. Uh, I guess we're starting about 10 minutes late, but praise God, we are starting. <laughs> amen, amen. Well, you know what? I believe some good's coming today when, when, when the equipment starts acting crazy and the internet and everything else just acts, acts crazy. Then, and uh, I've been sitting here waiting for the last 15, 20, 15 minutes trying to get this thing rolling. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for being patient with me this morning and uh, and just ready for God's word. I know I am as well. Um, we're going to open today with Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. And God's word says this. And this is, this is talking about introducing people to the Lord. See, I believe it's so important that at a time like this, where people are looking for answers, that we can turn people to Christ, amen, and we can lead people to Jesus and introduce them to the Lord. Uh, Romans 10, 14, in the Word of God says this, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? That's Romans 10, 14. You know, sharing the Lord is caring about people. Sharing the Lord is caring about people. See, we need to make it easy for people to accept Christ. We need to make it simple. You see, God's plan of salvation is so simple. Even a child can understand it. So listen, don't complicate it. Don't complicate the message of the Lord. Keep it very simple. Jesus went to the cross and paid the price for every one of our sins. And all you have to do is accept him into your heart, amen? And, and then you can also be forgiven. That's a simple message. You know, I remember when I first got saved, uh, I, was, I was going on the street doing street witnessing, and I began to just share my story. Now, I didn't even know the Bible. I didn't even know I was so young in the Lord. I didn't know anything about the Word of God. But I knew the God of the word. Amen. See, I knew the God that saved me. So, so I began to share my story. And it was very simple. All I said was, hey, listen, God changed my life. Just a few days ago, I was broken and hurt. And God came and, and it touched me. And it made an impact in my life. And, and God can do the same for you. And I said, well, is there any area in your life that you would want to change? And you know they would say, yes, there's an area. I said, well, you know what? The place to start is right here, right now, by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you know, people would say, well, and I said, well, well you want to pray? Because praying is what changed me. And you know what? Sure enough, that was as simple as it was. God changed me. God did something great in my life. Is there something in your life you want to change? Would you like to change your life? And they would say, yes. I said, well, let's just pray this prayer together. And they would pray and people got saved. The very first time I went out on the street to witness to people. That was so crazy. I thought, my God, how amazing is this? Let's go do this again. And I became, I was just so, I was literally became addicted to leading people to Jesus, amen. To really getting a fire, to bringing, you know, just that prayer, that sinner's prayer. See, don't, so many times I've seen people, listen, let me tell you this, don't argue with people. Don't try to prove the Bible. Don't debate over foolish questions like, who did Cain marry and who did, I mean, all this stuff. I mean, there's so many questions that come to sidetrack us. Don't try to prove God's existence. See, simply share God's truth with love and grace and allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to the Father through the Son. Amen. See, God's conviction precedes his conversion. God's conviction precedes his conversion. 
See, sharing God's word in an anointed, loving, caring kind of way, sharing the story of, of, of salvation and of Jesus Christ, when you do that with the right heart, man, God shows up, amen, and God uses you to lead people to Christ, amen, amen. Well, let's get right into our prayer emphasis this morning, and these are just a couple of things that I like to focus on before we go into our prayer time. And the first one is this, and this is so powerful, especially in a time like we're in today. And it's this, avoid victim mentality. Avoid victim mentality. Look what God's word has to say. In Romans 8, 35 and then 37, it says this, who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Then it says, no, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Listen, we are not victims. We are conquerors, amen. We are conquerors through him that loves us. Listen, weakness is an invitation to bullies. A weakness is an invitation to bullies. See, the devil is nothing but a big bully. And if you begin to talk victim mentality and victim talk, then the devil will come in and know that that is a weakness and will begin to attack. See, any wounded animal attracts the attack. When, when a lion is seeking to whom it's going to devour, when an actual lion is, is hunting, it looks for weakness. It looks for an animal that might be limping and hurt because now that animal cannot run it can, and it'll become a victim. So, so talk. Listen, don't stop talking like a victim of your circumstances. Don't, you know, we, we can rise above our circumstances. God loves you. And if God loves you, if God's for you, who can be against you? So at the end of the day, know that you are more than a conqueror. Amen. Walk like it. Come on. Walk like it. Talk like it. Act of it. Act like it. See, the love of God is going to keep you today. And you need to know that. You need to understand that for your own self because God wants to do great and mighty things. But we're not victims. We are victors. Amen. And let's walk in that this morning. The second thing I want to talk about is this. And this is an encouragement that I want to share with you right now. Remember the power of of praise. Oh, praise God. Remember the power of praise. Praise is a weapon. It's not just singing songs. It's not just saying good things. It is a weapon, amen, that draws God's presence into your life. Remember the power of praise. Psalms 149, 6 through 9 says this, let the high praises of God be in your mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to bind their kings with chains to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all the saints. That's you. This honor has all the saints. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, praise God. Listen, praise is your verbal and physical response to the greatness of God. Oh, let me repeat that one more time and note it. Praise is your verbal and physical response to the greatness of God. You know, music, singing, worship, it creates an atmosphere. See, when you begin to worship the Lord, when you begin to praise him, hallelujah. Listen, it's not just something we do in church before the word. See, praise is something we need to do every single day. It's one of the greatest weapons and with that has the most power because it invites God into your circumstances. See, all these things create an atmosphere for miracles. When you begin to praise the Lord, amen, see, now you create an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit is welcomed, and now you create an atmosphere for miracles. So praising the Lord is so important. You need to understand that you're responsible for the, for the climate. You're responsible for the climate you permit around you. You're responsible for the atmosphere you set around you. Listen, you can decide, amen, you can decide how you feel by the atmosphere you create around yourself. See, if you're, no, if you're taking notes, note this. The atmosphere you permit 
decides the product you produce. Oh man, that's worth that's worth noting right there. The atmosphere you permit decides the product you produce. See, create an atmosphere of praise. Remember that praise is powerful. And the more you praise the Lord, the more you surround yourself, hallelujah, with his presence. And the third thing I want to pray about this morning is this. Pray in agreement with God. Pray in agreement with God. Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 says this, and this is the Lord speaking through the prophet Ezekiel. He says this, I look for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I search for someone to stand in the gap. There it is, to stand in the gap, to intercede in the wall so I wouldn't have to destroy the land, but I found no one. I found no one. You see, here we see that God is talking about rebuilding the wall of what? Of righteousness. And he's looking for someone that uh, he's looking for someone that would pray, that would intercede and stand in the gap, and found no one that would agree with him. See, become a bridge to God. Become a bridge to God. Listen, not just become a bridge to God, but become a bridge for God. It's so important that you know that God wants to use you. He wants to use your life. He wants to use your experiences. He wants you to, to use your mouth, amen, to begin to pray and declare God's goodness. See, God is looking for someone to stand in the gap, an intercessor that agrees with him, amen. You understand, we need to understand that prayer activates God. See, prayer pleasures God. And prayer engages God. So when we pray, we are welcoming his presence, amen. And we need to pray in agreement with what God's heart desires. See, when you start praying for your child or your spouse, when you begin to intercede for people around you, the words you're praying immediately activate divine favor towards you. The moment you start agreeing with God in prayer, the moment you connect with the Lord and pray what he desires, you automatically activate divine favor in your life because God is looking for those that would stand in the gap and agree with him. You see, praying God's will is praying God's word. Oh, make that note right there. Praying God's will is praying God's word. So if you want to be in agreement with the Lord, then pray his word. His word is clear. His word is powerful. And when you pray God's word, you are praying in agreement with God and you're praying God's will as well. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, listen, right now, uh, if you came in a little bit late, it's okay. Listen, I'm running, I was running a little bit late as well. Uh, my technology wasn't working well this morning. But if you are, listen, right now, just lift up your hands. And if you came in late, hit play afterwards. I'm going to put this on there and just come back and see it again because it's worth hearing what God just spoke just now. But just begin to lift up your hands right now. Begin to praise him. If you're driving, keep your hands on the steering wheel, amen. But right now, just begin to praise him. Just begin to thank him right now. Just begin to glorify his name. Just begin to give him honor and praise this morning. Just take a few minutes, if, if you're right now, just to close yourself in with the Lord. And Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now. We praise you, Lord God. And help us not to have a victim mentality, Lord God. Today, we are more than conquerors, Lord God. So help us to see ourselves the way you see us, Lord God. We are strong, Lord God. We are anointed of you, Lord God. We have been called, amen. We have been chosen of you, Father. So in Jesus' name, help us to see ourselves like that, Lord God. That we are not victims, but we are victors. That we are more than conquerors. That we are truly overcomers this morning, oh God. So Father, help us to stop talking like we're in our place because it's somebody else's fault. In Jesus' name, Lord God, we don't need to blame anyone. We don't need to pay 
play the blame game for our circumstances. But Father, help us through your power, through your anointing, and through your favor, Lord God, to just raise up, Lord God, to rise us up above them, Lord God, so that we can walk as victors and not victims this morning, Lord God. And Father God, help us to remember the power of praise this morning. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. When we praise you, you said you inhabit the praises of your people, Father. And in Jesus' name, Lord God, come right now as we praise you, as we glorify you, as we thank you for your goodness your grace and your mercy, oh God. I pray in Jesus' name, oh God, that you would move mightily right now in our lives. We welcome your presence. We welcome your power, Lord God. We welcome your anointing into our lives right now. Father God, lift every burden as we praise you, as we glorify your name. We take our eyes off our circumstances and we put our eyes on the one that can change every situation, oh God. So Father, we praise you and we thank you this morning. Let your presence fill our hearts. Let it fill our minds right now in Christ Jesus. And Lord, this morning, we also pray in agreement with you, Lord God. We pray according to to your word, Lord God, just as the prayer of agreement, hallelujah, hallelujah, that if two or more agree, that you would do it, Lord God. And Lord, we pray that prayer. We all gather together and become one voice and one heart and one mind right now. But we also pray, Lord God, in agreement with your word. Your word says that when we're saved, our household shall be saved. So we receive that right now. That's your word. We agree with your word, Father God. And we agree that our families and our loved ones will be saved in the name of Jesus, Father God. Your word says that you shall supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. We agree with that word right now, Lord God. We come in agreement with you, Father, and we believe that you'll supply for every need. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We receive your blessing. We receive promotions. We receive increase right now in our lives, Lord God. I thank you for those, Lord God, that are being blessed financially and spiritually right now, Lord God, because you will supply everything that we need, oh God. And we thank you, Father God, because your word says this. We agree with your word when it says, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. I believe that, Lord God. We believe that together. That is your word. We come in agreement with your word. So we pray for those that are bound up in a, in in strongholds and addictions and those that are bound up, Lord God, in sin, those that are bound up in alcoholism, those that are bound up, Lord God, in pornography right now, those that are bound up in all these areas of their lives, in Jesus' name, we declare them healed and whole and free, because that's what your word says, Lord God, that you will set the captive free, Lord God, and help us to speak truth to them, Lord God, your word says the truth will make us free. Bring others to, to minister to them as well and share your truth with them as well, Lord God. And right now, if you're with me, listen, I always encourage you to bring a prayer list with you. And you can just go to your prayer list right now and begin to go through those names. Begin to right now, just take time, just close yourself in with the Lord right now. Just begin to praise him. Just begin to give him glory and honor this morning. Amen. Just begin to magnify his name and begin to just lift up those names. That's right. All your unsaved loved ones, your family, your friends, your colleagues at work, just begin to pray for them right now. Just begin to stand in the gap. Amen. All you intercessors, begin to intercede for people around you right now. Just take one more minute or so. Just begin to praise him. That's right. Just begin to glorify him this morning. Begin to declare God's promises over the lives of all those that you love, all those that you care for, all those that are in authority today, all those in the government that need prayer, Lord God, just all the situation and all the unrest and division in our nation. Just begin to pray right now in your own words, amen. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. We give you glory and honor and praise this morning for your goodness and your grace, oh God, hallelujah, amen, amen, amen. Listen, I know some of y'all came in a little bit late. I started late, actually, this morning. So if you get a chance, watch this again. I guarantee you, you'll be blessed, amen. And I wanna close this morning 
with Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27 and 28. And the word of God says this, do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it's in your power to help them. If you can help your neighbor now, don't say, come back tomorrow and then I'll help you. God's word is so clear that if you have the opportunity to do some good for someone, and you should do it, amen. If you had the time, give them the time they need. Give them the encouragement that they need. At the end of the day, God has called every single one of us to do good, to show our faith. See, us doing good for someone else is not about points. It's about sharing the love of God, amen. It's about being God's hands and God's feet right here and be able to touch people's lives and be a blessing to them as well, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Well, listen, thank you so much for being patient with me this morning. I usually start right at 7 a.m., but had all kinds of technical difficulties, but I'm so glad you joined me this morning. If you came in late, listen, hit the button, watch this again. It's only about 25 minutes or so. I guarantee you'll be blessed. So listen, let me go and pray over you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, the Lord bless my brothers and sisters. The Lord keep, uh, Lord, you bless them and keep them, Lord God. Lord God, let your face shine upon them and be gracious to them, Lord, and lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace this morning. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you what, we have touched heaven today. and We've done it together. See, it takes all of us joining in. Amen. And listen, before you leave right now, before you get off Facebook, if you have, or if you are even on the, the conference call, before you leave, put a prayer request down. We have a we have a, our coordinator, Lisa, that's online with us right now, and she's going to make a note, and we're going to pray for every prayer request that you put on there today. So if you have a prayer request, listen, Go ahead and put it in right now. If there's something you want us to join our faith with yours, if you want us to pray for over those circumstances, listen, I wanna, I wanna let you know this. God answers prayer. And God has been doing miracles in our midst, amen. So many wonderful testimonies of what God is doing, amen. So listen, thanks again for joining me this morning. So glad. I'm Pastor Carlos Rivera with New Life. And remember, when you're walking in the Spirit, you would not fulfill the desires of the flesh, amen. Walk in the spirit, have a blessed day today. Go out and share God's love, God's word. And remember, your smile should be your lifestyle. God bless you and have a great day.